<laughs> Welcome to the Friend Zone. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Show. We We're... got a special call in caller today. Tell him your name, son. It's me, it's Shane. I'm back. Oh, making now, a this glorious. This had a crazy story about a sexcapade that he wanted to tell us. All right, go ahead. It was wild. Thank you. All right, now that's the end of that. Bye. So, <laughs> long, it's been a long time since you've been on the episode, Shane, but here we are again, living the good Shane, old days. Shane, who do you want to voice? Uh, I'll voice whatever. I don't think you should voice anybody unless it's going to be with the rest of the trial. Oh, it could be comedy for him to take like one of our voices. But let okay. him do. Let him do. Uh, with, let him do. Uh, Apollo. Okay. First, no. First new character that appears. <laughs> no, Shane gets him. All right. First new character. All right. This is uh, episode four. I believe it's the final one of the first game. We're going on in. First, I got a question to ask you guys. Is uh, are we gonna get a true frame, or will this game be the first game to break that tradition? I'll always be innocent. I think it's gonna be Maya. <laughs> That'll be her introduction, and she'll actually have done it. No righty, that's what everyone says. Let's get in there. Turnabout succession. Is this when Kevin, Phoenix you know, officially you know leaves? You know whose voice is Kevin Zors. I forgot whose voice it is. Come on. Wait, I don't think we do know whose voice this is. If we did. Should I tell you? Oh, I only have two people I voice. And it's one of them. It Phoenix? Uh, no. In order to understand it myself, I had to know the story of the last seven long years. Oh, wait. No, I th I was it not Apollo? No. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, I don't remember then. It's Big Brother. Big Brother. Hmm, who's a Big Brother? Shane, do you know who I'm mm -hmm. talking about? I say Big Brother. Big Brother. Know. Nothing happens by chance. No coincidence. No. Hmm, big Brother. Possible. Are you talking oh, about yeah. Uncle? <laughs> Damn, they both shot that guy. Gail. And now, you stand ready to begin the final chapter of this story! Was it that guy? I can't believe you forgot. Yeah, I forgot. Who's the fucking big brother? I'm man hackers. Will a defendant be found guilty or innocent? The decision is yours! Oh yeah, him. That big brother. <laughs> wow. No, I think he's the defendant. I don't think he's the one telling that little story. I think he was the one telling that story. I don't think so. I think uh, Apollo is, and that was all him wondering, like, oh, I need to learn about the past so I can defend him. Gavin. You don't think that was Gavin telling him the decision is yours? <laughs> nope. I believe it was uh, just the narrator. All right, let's get in there. Hey, Apollo, look on TV. Look, look. Yeah, I'm busy. I'm reading this newspaper. Well, look at that. It's the grammar ease. He's the last one, all right. Amazing. How did you know what was on the TV? I'm a magician. Apollo, I can see the future. Wow, you'd have to slap me for that. I was writing about last case in my journal. That was three months ago, Apollo. Come on, quit writing about it. Our lawyer's it's supposed to write things and a writer. Apollo, not journals. Three months ago. It's a long story. I did a lot. I want to vacuum pack the field the moment for later and put it in a guitar case. Right now, I'm wanting the crowd by figuring out how it let me disappear. That's right! You d Uncle Valen did that illusion and you ruined it for everybody! You said his secrets! Fuck you. But you're missing him on TV right now! Look at him! Fine, I'll just get into the good part anyways, alright. Better watch a little TV with this little child. After all, her father's expecting me to look after her while he's away. What you're seeing now is a rehearsal for the greatest magic show on earth. 
happening right in our very own Sunshine Coliseum. The Sunshine Coliseum? What I hey. said? Hey, that's where the Gavineers concert was. Only three more days until miracles happen here, right before your unbelieving eyes. I didn't know Stickler was the announcer. The legendary Trove Grand Marais is performing for the first time in seven years. That's going to be great. I'm so... Th Apollo, why did they pick that guy to be the announcer on TV? What a horrible voice. Oh no. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. You and Daddy are coming too. Man, this network really takes live feedback. <laughs> Just like it's that. The, it's the magic network. <laughs> it's a the, Twitch stream. <laughs> the legendary Grammares. If Truce's real father was still alive, he'd be on that stage performing miracles. I've got the tickets and everything. Seventy dollars? What a ripoff. No, you're reading it wrong. Seven thousand. Seven thousand dollars. Well, you already paid seven thousand dollars for these. Quick. Ah, uh, there you are. Working hard or hardly working? Hey, how you been? Hi there, stranger. Yeah, who exactly is this guy? I've never seen him before in my life. Don't. I feel like I've seen you a long time ago. Three months ago, in fact. <laughs> How goes it, Trucy? Here, I got a present for you. Yay, pudding! I love pudding! Ooh, it's farm fresh, and there's three of them! And there's three I had to pace myself. Well, I'm beat. That's right, Daddy! You're on a top-secret mission, and there's no way it's about Apollo at all! You've got to take it easy with the secrets, you know. <laughs> uh, how right you are. So, you still can't tell us what this mission is, eh? Oh, wait. Actually, Trucy was completely wrong, and I shouldn't have said how right you are. Because this is about you. What? Me? Ooh, maybe you're getting a top secret mission too. Not a chance, Trucy. Maybe you can be one of those guys. Nah, Trucy, yes, Trucy, he'll never pick me. A spy! Shut I'm already up, a spy. He'll never pick me before a secret mission. He'll never pick me. <laughs> uh, to be honest, telling you about the mission was the whole reason I came here today. What? Tell me. You heard of the jurist system, right? The jurist system? That's right. It's a new legal system everyone's talking about. Have you heard of it, Apollo? Huh? Uh, yeah, I, saw, I heard about a newspaper that I was just reading. Uh, maybe not as many people are talking about it as I thought. The jury is the me. Tell me about this. So, Daddy, what is this jurist system thing? Oh, um, Trucy, do you know what a jury is? I've heard of it. Isn't that those people who sit in court and all those old courtroom dramas? The ones who get to decide if a guy's gonna die or not. Do you know Apollo? Only from TV dramas. It's 12 people chosen from the community, right? Well, they're thinking about reviving that system. They're calling the new system the jurist system. No more doing whatever you like, Your Honor. You suck. Not quite that harsh. The jurors cooperate with the judge. They help analyze the case from different angles. 
Ah, and there will only be six of them under the current proposal, right? Wait, so I do know about this. I thought you didn't know anything about this, Apollo. Uh, I'm a remember right now. It knows the short. Wow, shortage. you know your stuff, Apollo. You've been reading about it and then lied. They're finding... They're finding directly... Off a, a, they're find. Oh my god. Okay, hold on. Let me look away and then look okay. Come on, you old man. <laughs> Say the words, right? Their findings directly affect the verdict. Hopefully people will start taking the course a little more seriously now. I feel like I'm on some educational TV show. Starring Dr. Wright. Painting Dr. Wright, Dr. Wright. Ah, Dr. Wright and his assistant, Trucy. And, uh, mascot, I guess, Apollo. We could do without one of us. Mascot? Hey! So, what's my secret mission? So, what's my secret mission? Uh, juris the, the jury system is my mission, more or less. But I really need you to go out and fetch many people's panties. Anyway, keep in mind that new ideas like this system are always risky, Apollo. Too true. Everyone's got an opinion, and they just talk and talk, and nothing gets decided. Kind of like you, Apollo. Oh, I'm not that bad, am I? In any case, we're gonna give it a shot. Uh, test, if you will. I don't like tests. We'll take a case as a sample and choose six jurists. I'll be the one helping with that process, incidentally. Helping? How? Well, for one, I'll be chair of the Juris System Simulated Court Committee. The chair constructs the ideal situation, choosing the case, uh, the jurist candidates, even the judge and the courtroom. Naturally, it's going to be the same courtroom as always, and the same judge. Wow, it's like you have a real job! Saves money. I was never that good at piano, to be honest. Yeah, I noticed. The trial's tomorrow, by the way. Don't miss it. The trial simulation, that is. A simulation, huh? Sounds interesting. I hope no one gets murdered there. So, what kind of case is the trial simulation about? Uh, well, murder. Good thinking! No sense wearing your cell phone on something too serious! Oh wow, you don't think murder's that serious? Crazy. True. Uh, the case is murder. <laughs> <laughs> That's not simple at all! By simple, did you mean that the defendant is... Guilty, yes, most likely. So, good luck, Apollo. Um, with what? With the trial tomorrow. You're defending him, of course. Recall that I said I had something to do with you. Go for it, Apollo! Get that guilty! It's just a test case anyway, no sweat. Yeah, but there's still a verdict to be decided. And a potential se potentially serious sentence. The most serious in a worst case scenario. Ah, you mean the verdict's for real? That's not a test trial, that's a real trial. All the forms have been filed, there's no turning back now. The trial begins tomorrow at 10 a.m. Good luck. Well, why am I only here about this now? Uh, yeah, there was a change this morning. I picked a new case. Huh? Something that happened last night. Wow. What happened last night? Alright, so what case are you going to use? 
You really want to know, don't you? I mean, I'm a I'm a defense lawyer. It's kind of the kind of point. I'm the defense lawyer. That's kind of the point. If all goes well, then yes, of course. This is just a test. We wanted everyone to start without preconceptions. A blank slate, as it were. There's a difference between having a blank slate and just being totally clueless. Whose dumb idea was that anyways? Mine, naturally. Oh. Well, Phoenix, you stupid. You want to know that badly, I suppose. I could give you permission to examine the scene of the crime. Good! That's better. But you can't talk to anyone involved with the case. I'm gonna have to put a gag order on you again. What? The hell am I supposed to defend? You let me worry about the details here. Remember, I'm in charge of this trial. All of it. But you don't want it to backfire, do ya? Apollo, if you get in a pinch, I'll just forge evidence. And if I'm in charge of the whole trial, that means the entire affair is my responsibility, for good or for bad. Oh, he's got that serious face on. Just do what you can. And don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Uh, alright. I'd recommend going down to the detention center. Your client's waiting for you, and you can ask about the scene there. But you just said I couldn't talk to anyone involved. Uh, you can talk to your client. He wasn't even involved, it's just getting pinned on him. If you can get her a talk. Oh my god, it's Maya. Well, time's a-wasting! Oh, it's Is a it test. Maya? Did they really bring Maya back just to keep their tradition going? It's a test because she's a veteran at being accused, so she knows. <laughs> <what> the... <laughs> All right, tell me about this guy. Hey, Apollo! I know you're all excited about that secret mission, but what about this? The Troop Grammar Ye Grand Magic Show. Oh, I threw that in the trash already. <laughs> oh right, the, the card tricks. They're not card tricks! They're grand illusions, miracles, the apocalypse, heaven and earth will fall! So what? That's three whole days from now. Chillax. It's at Sunshine Coliseum! Let's go! Let's go today! I'm sick of that place, Trucy. We've been there so many times already. We can say hi to Uncle Valent! Why don't we just wave him to round me pop up like he always does? Have fun! What? I can't go by myself. You know I'm not very outgoing. Right. Well, it's time for you to learn how to be social. Why not go with her? But the secret mission! Nah, don't worry about that. You'll hear all about it tomorrow, regardless. I don't trust that smile. He knows something he's not telling me. Yippee! Now you can take me to the Coliseum! That's where the crime scene is! Uh, I guess it wouldn't kill me, Pop, over there. Ah, uh, Grammarie. That reminds me. What's this, Daddy? Isn't that silk hat the Grammarie seal? Consider it a birthday present, Trucy. Thanks, it's great! Mr. Hat's gonna go to the show, too! Today isn't my birthday, though. Hmm, good point. I don't know when you were born, actually. What day is it today, Paul? Ah, huh? today? Um, I think it's Recycle Your Plastics Day. And it's a uh, recycle your plastics present. Yippee! It's so plastic! So go ahead and recycle it, toss it away. I'm giving up trying to understand them. It's much easier that way. So, what is it? 
Can I open it, Daddy? No. What? I really want to open it! You'll need that envelope someday. Someday soon. Tomorrow. Don't open it until then. Initial piece of evidence. Well, why didn't you just hold on to it until then? Because that would be the logical thing to do. He's gotta be all shady. I'll hold on to this. Give me that. Take just it open it now. Hands. It's mine now. An envelope about the Grameers, huh? Hmm. Alrighty. I guess we're out of here. Let's meet our person. All right, Shane, this is all you. All right. What if it's Maya? You won't voice her? It's been many years. It's not Maya. If it's Maya, I'll voice her, but it's not Maya. That's 20 minutes we've been waiting here. 20 minutes! Maybe I should complain. I'm sure that guard has better things to do than stand there pretending he doesn't see us. You know, the minute we get angry, the client will show. It always works that way. It's like shouting, oh, waiter, and they're standing right behind you. Oh, guard. Is our client going to be much longer? Go ahead, Shane. Hey, what are you talking about? Haven't you already stirred the meeting yet? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, what? Where'd you come from? Ellipsy. Well, 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 anyways, uh, please have a seat. Man, my other years have not been good to you. You look dead on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, girls. Girl talk. True sees all you. I'm nervous, Apollo. She's weird. It's the silence. It builds suspense. Apollo, I think she killed it, person. She did it. Why don't you do something, Trucy? You're a magician, aren't you? <sighs> Fine. That's right, okay. <laughs> I'm the amazing Mr. Hat. Seen it before? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you killed her, Juicy! You I fucking killed her! her. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> I, I, I knew Mr. Hat would do it someday. I knew he would snap. Hmm. Miss Magic Underwear might have been a bare bet. That's magic panties, Apollo. Now you're gonna get framed. I think we just go to the Coliseum. She's not gonna say anything. No, no, don't worry. Show me that envelope. What's your name? So, what's your name? Bring out Mr. Hat. <laughs> Alright, I'm supposed to introduce myself first. I'm Apollo. Apollo Justice. And I'm Trucy, right? I know. This is getting over fast. Do you like magic? Um, you see this? This is a magic show ticket. I fucking love magic. Um, does it ring any bells? Does anything I say ring anything? Look at this attorney's badge. See this attorney's badge? Isn't it so shiny? Okay, well, no. confirm she's not, she's not a cat. Non-verbal. Bye. <laughs> wow, that's just... the easiest character yet. 
Thank you for voicing her, Shane. God damn it, we're back here again. Woohoo! This is it, Apollo! The place where magic and dreams converge! Why are you acting like this is. We've never been before. Just a while ago, it was a place where murder and nightmares converged. Was it really that nightmarish, though? Not really. Let's go say hi to Uncle Valent! What about the case? I think that's Uncle Valent. Mm, nope, I think it's a new person. Shane, go ahead. <laughs> Only a performer lasts like that. Oh. <clears throat> Sorry, I was clearing my throat. The young Miss Trucy. How often I'd hoped we'd meet again, only to tell myself it was an impossible dream. Tee hee, Uncle Valen, how's it going? I'm glad to see you too. Of course you are. Humility is definitely not one of his stronger traits. Well, Miss Trucy, how does the day find you? If you've come to give me flowers, do it after the show, I beg you. Actually, we came to wish you good luck. And congratulations on your big magic show. Oh, but it is, it is I who wish to congratulate you. Not everyone is so lucky as to witness miracles, such as the ones I perform. Yeah, yeah, you're amazing. We get the picture. The world will watch in wonderment as Magnifi's illusions are reborn. Here, on stage, by my hand. Tell us about the big magic show. Everyone's talking about the big magic show. Is it true that the Grammarie miracle is back after a seven year absence? The one that killed my father? Miss Trucy, I must apologize. This show and this honor should have been his. Daddy. My co-magician in training, Zack, if that terrible thing hadn't happened where I shot him to death. It's okay. It was still a cool trick. <laughs> Your father was a great magician, Trucy. He caught that bullet so well in the heart. If he were alive, then I, Valent, would have been proud to stand upon his stage as his assistant. <laughs> this stage as his assistant. Uh, thanks. You know, I'm happy you're doing the show. To think, we get to see the great Big Nippy's illusions again. She really is looking forward to this, isn't she? Who is Magnify? My mentor, the magnificent Magnify Grammarie, was a true deity among magicians. A creator god who gave birth to magic and illusions that defined our very imaginations. I was so little when I last saw one, but I still remember his shows. He did wheelies in a sports car through the air, above the audience. And then he sped off to outer space, faster than the speed of sound. We've never seen him since. I'm guessing that memory was a bit embellished. For seven long years, the world has been waiting for a miracle to watch his. As heir to the troop secrets, it falls upon me to provide one. It is my God-given destiny. Um. Um. <laughs> um. I read your mind. Yes, you, nameless face who speaks for the nameless masses. How can I help you? If the world is waiting, why did you hold out for seven young, long years, you're thinking? Savari. Hmm, it appears the lad is uninformed. Perhaps you have heard of the magic known as law, which governs our land. Go ahead, I'll let you talk. Yes. I have a <laughs> the, <laughs> the performance oh, of making these miracles impossible. 
A certain law prevented it for seven years, but no more. Everyone keeps talking about seven years, huh? Hold on, your restraining order lasts. <laughs> I was wondering if it's like a... What is that called when, like, a crime you can't get punished for it after so long? Double Jeopardy? No, no, not Double Jeopardy. limitations? Yes, I wonder if uh, there's, like, a statute of limitations that was happening. And why was that? A little matter called performance rights, Miss Trucy. We were all wrong. Performance rights? Can you tell us about these performance rights? Magnippy's magic relied upon an incredibly innovative idea. A trick, if you will. That trick was considered his property, and as such was protected by property laws. Magic has rules like this? Crazy. Intellectual property. Intellectual maybe. property, maybe. <laughs> Magnippy knew this and bequeathed it in his will. That is amazing. To one person. You mean... You mean him? Yes, him. <laughs> yes, Miss <Mr. laughs> He cuts you up and talks to Trucy. <laughs> yes, Miss Trucy. It was your papa. Zack was the inheritor of the Grammar Yee Miracle. Daddy? <laughs> Yet, as you well know, I killed him. He disappeared suddenly, seven years ago. Then he reappeared six feet under the ground. I think I see where this story is going. Once a person Once is a person is classified missing for a certain period of time, they're considered legally deceased. In all absoluteness, those rolled up sleeves conceal your competence well, young man. That certain period of time in which you speak, seven years. Ah. Yes, Miss Trucy, though it pains me to say it. This past spring, April, was the time. Your father was legally declared deceased. In the absence of a formal will, the secrets of our mighty mentor passed to me. This was, in fact, stipulated in the will by Magnifi himself. Is... is that how it works, Apollo? Don't ask me, I don't fucking know how magicians do stuff. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's called the death of as <laughs> He's declared missing permanently. Wow, good job, Trucy. You can read minds like me. Daddy. So we have a ticket for your show. That right here. <laughs> <laughs> a challenge, is it? You want me to make that disappear? Please, Dad, I don't have to go to the show. Very well, give it to me. No, no, take it, take it, here. Are all magicians like this? Apollo, what was that look just now? I was just thinking how hard it is to get any information out of a magician. Uh. Can we go in now? Nope. Nope. Anything to examine? No, the outside here is nothing. But what about that child getting chased by that dog? <laughs> Is she gonna talk to us now? Can you examine her and click on the book? Maybe we should just burn through those. Tell me your name right now. Shane, go ahead and voice act. Um, um, hi. Well, I'm your defense. I, I really think it has to be fate, you know? You and me here in this place, staring into each other's cold, dead eyes. My fish eyes. And my fate, I mean destiny. Did you know I'm good with astrology? I'm a... I'm a Taurus. I think Tell you're me. cancer. Tell me, what's your sign? Ah, Libra, I see. I can tell you mine if you'd like, Apollo. No, 
Never mind, I just got carried away there. I seem destined to get difficult clients, it seems. Okay, what about, uh, hey, I know. Maybe, maybe you can tell us about what happened, you know? I'm your defense attorney, after all. Shane, go ahead. <coughs> oh, anything out of the ordinary happened lately? <laughs> well, the other day this tourist from out of town stopped to ask me directions. Later, Trusey. Shut up. I feel like I need to ask direction myself here. Well, that was fruitless. Though I think I understand despair a little better now. My eyes are starting to become like hers. You did good, Apollo. Look at this hand. Look! She's doing her nails? What? Are nails more important than defense? Is that it? What is that? Oh, it's a nail polish bottle with a weird handle. Huh. Well, let's go, Trusy. She's a freak. Let's make sure she goes to prison. Um, excuse me. What? Oh, do you read this? Um, sure. I feel like a teenager on a first date. And this is the love letter we pass from desk to desk at school. Stop looking so wistful and read it, Apollo. It. It's a business card with a name and an address. The name is Verda Misham. The address is for Drew Studio. Hmm. And you're giving me this card because... Hmm. Well, looks like we're finished here. I wonder if Drew's studio is the seat of the crime. Let's go find out. Great job, Shane. Great job. Wow. Yo, I like that jelly, or not that jellyfish, that puffer fish. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this looks like, it looks like a studio. It looks like life imitating art, or maybe it's the other way around. But the tape on the ground there, it's a bit jarring. Yeah, looks like we found our crime scene. Apollo, look at all those paintings. I know, that jellyfish one looks real cool. I don't see a jellyfish. Hey, don't touch those. Don't touch, especially that jellyfish one. That's uh, okay, I'm just looking. Watch me make this precious art disappear. Hey, careful of its sting. paintings. Ah, Paolo, look at this one. Is there a baby in that peach? Looks half finished. You can still see the rough sketch underneath. But that's odd. The rough part doesn't look like the rest of the painting at all. Is this... Is this a treasure map? A national treasure? Yeah, good point. That is odd. It's starting to look like the Declaration of Independence the more I look at it. It's the map of a prison. Hmm. All the paintings have a really different style, too. I bet you did this one left-handed. <clears throat> I bet it called? is the tech is a uh, detective's guy. I thought I might find you two here. Munch, munch. Oh. Emma, long time no see. You got any snackoos for me? Oh. Seems like I'm running too far too often. And here, I got a bag for you. Here you go. I bet I know why you're here, too. You know about the trial simulation tomorrow, don't you? I've heard about it, sure. So Mr. Wright chose you, huh? 
We don't even know what the case is about. Well, he was killed. The artist who owns the studio, that is. Mr. Drew Misham. Drew Mish... Drew... What did he draw? Drew Misham? Drew me... Drew, Drew me sham. Drew my sham. Drew me sham. Misham. And his daughter was put in arrest. Yeah, we just saw her at the detention center. It was funny though. She seemed more like a victim than any kind of person who would commit murder. I don't know, did, did you not look into her eyes, Trucy? That you did look like true love in her eyes. <laughs> you don't say. We not miss him. My, not even my poisoning? That's how it was done, you know. Poisoning would come away to get the job done when the murderer is a woman. <gasps> poisoning? Was it done with a cocoon? Anyway. Mr. Wright told me you'd be coming. It was jellyfish venom. <laughs> Feel free, take a look around. <laughs> I'll just be over here with my snack goose. Can't talk to anyone related to a case this time around. Which means we better find out as much as we can here at the scene. Or else. No doubt. There's a hidden options. Van Gogh behind the dresser. But the daytime version. Let's look at this painting. I wouldn't mind taking a closer look at those paintings. Hmm. I just love oils. You know how they're so thick. Is is that the word? All right, Shane. What do you think of the, these paintings? These Mad jellyfish drawing. I'm just surprised at how different these all are. I want a photo. Yeah, what's going on with this half-finished one? It must have been a work in progress. You can still see the raw sketch below. That's what's so weird. The sketch part doesn't fit all the finished parts. I notice. That is weird. That letter box looks funny sitting inside a room like this. Let's take a look. Empty. Someone took all the monies already? The other half of that letter box is actually connected to the outside of the studio. Mr. Michon put his letters in there. And the postman took them away. Impressive that someone still wants to write letters in this day and age. Or wrote, lad, rather. Look at the one behind the dresser. All mm. the way on the left. Now down. This one? Yes. Hey! There's a painting hidden back here! And there's hey. a safe behind the painting! You're right! What if it's embarrassing somehow and he, d he didn't want anyone to see it? It's like a picture of him at the Christmas party. You certainly seem pleased by the possibility. Ah, it's so normal. That's probably something. Picture of that other one. My god. Uh, Someone broke in and did their own art. <laughs> is he a counterfeiter? Well, doesn't this pain look like the other one? <laughs> no, it's stupid to even bring it up. It's no way it looks like that one. I better get professional opinion on this. Do you know a professional painter? Don't think we do. That's it for prints. Ah, that's the victim's coffee mug. Aha! So the poison was in here! This is my first time seeing a real poisoned mug of coffee. I would hope so. Munch, munch. Drink, drink, drink. Poison coffee? Not exactly, actually. What do you mean? No trace of poison was found in the coffee. What? How was he poisoned then? What was it, poison paint? You have to figure out the rest yourselves. 
I'm a fishing now on your side after all. Oh, it probably was poison bait. I bet you licked his brushes. Hmm. <sighs> that's why there's paint like on the lip of that. Oh. Ah. That's where he dipped it, and that's where it went. Uh. Ah, Apollo! That's where the body was! That's the spot where Mr. Drew Mishan passed away. Do you think his spirit is still here? Apollo, do you believe in ghosts? Hell no. He put the coffee mug next to his lips, and the next moment... There's quite a bit of paint on the ground. See that half-painted painting there? He must have been working on that right up to the moment he died. Wow, true artist at the end. Or maybe he started a year ago and was procrastinating. Hmm. Wow. Let's take a closer look at his desk here. This will enhance. Oh, I see look at his here. cool haircut. Wow, his wife looks like the defendant. Mom. Ah, <laughs> huh, something about the way that figure is posed. I've seen that pose before. It's you, Apollo. You're making one of your flamboyant gestures. Objection, a bit. A bit, a bit. Please, I'm a professional. I wonder why it's posed like that. Coincidence? So this is Drew Misham. And this little girl must be his wife. Yes, they took that some years ago. They look close. A happy little family. Until you arrested his daughter, you terrible person, Emma. Ah! Look, I was personally against that, okay? She just didn't seem very suspicious, scientifically speaking. Uh-huh. Right. Evil person. Science is evil. Ooh, cute. Look at the tiny frame, Apollo. Tiny is right. That thing's barely two inches high. What picture will fit in that? None, apparently. It's empty. There's no glass in it either. What's it doing sitting on the desk? This is a lesson for us all. Be sure to check the size of the when you buy the frames. PSA Did you get to that? the world. Is this a journal? Only an idiot would have a journal, right, Apollo? Let's read it. Mm, what is it, Apollo? He didn't write the name of the killer, did he? It's new. Zip Shambi? It's new. He didn't write a single line. Ah, uh, you had me go in there for a while. Oh, it says Trucy Socks in it. Ah, there we go. He did write something. No! And in my handwriting, what a forger. Damn. Well, I don't trust an artist's opinion anyway. Ooh, Apollo, what's this feather? Isn't that a pen? Like an old-fashioned quill pen? But it doesn't have a pointy end. That's most likely for sweeping detritus off the desk. Uh, what's that word? Detritus? Detritus? Nope. Nope, it's not. Damn it. Add it to the counter. It's detritus. Wow, yeah, first you time I've seen that counter in a while. Oh, you'll see it again later. Bonus scientific, that's my motto. Exactly, what about that with bold or scientific? I think that's... Oh! This envelope has been opened and resealed! Ooh, I know how to do that! You take a pot of boiling water and hold the envelope up to the steam. And you drop it because it's the hot. The glue melts and it opens. Cool, huh? Whoever did this wasn't so delicate. You're right. It looks like they just ripped it open and stuck it back together. Huh? 
the postmark on his letter is from seven years ago? Wow, what an odd number. What an odd number. How would somebody open a letter, then seal it again? Hmm, better hang on to this thing. Preserve the memory from seven years ago, so you can open it every seven years. Oh, that was a lot from that little desk. Look at all these paints, Apollo. There's so many. He's got like two kinds of red. Wow. Alright, got... Nane, do your color mixing what? puzzle. Do your color mixing oh, puzzle. Oh, do we get to it? 20 kinds of red, huh? This guy two must be Two kinds a... of red. This guy must be a Warhammer painter to have that much red. What does he need that crane for in the back? What do you think he's lifting that's so heavy? We should repaint finger. your suit, Apollo. How about this shade of green? That'll be enough of that, thanks. What is all this equipment here for? It doesn't look very artistic, really. He had everything from a lathe to a laser cutter. Looks like he was ready to work on metals and wood too. Though his equipment's a bit too old, to tell the truth. Why would a painter need all this? From the dust, I say he hasn't used this stuff for years. This corner doesn't fit well with the rest of the studio. Ooh, do you think I could borrow this? I want to cut a quarter in half and make a trick coin. This is a crime scene, Trucy. Oh my god, it is. But it costs like 50 bucks at the magic shop. For a ha for half a quarter? Rip off. And this is where he paints the Warhammer figurines. You need the magnifying glass in order to see the little details. Is this desk for painting, Apollo? That would be a drafting table. What's a uh, drifting? Like for the war? Basically, it's a cool. <laughs> it's a tool for making precise diagrams. Wow, painting is harder than I thought. Why would a painter need a drafting table? Was he an architect too? Uh, I think that's it. Anything to talk to Emma about? Did you look about? at the bodies? <laughs> yeah, you did. did. What about the bucket? Nope. What about the spilled paints? Nope. nope. What about the easel? What about oh. the... Oh, what was that? A bench? I imagine this coffee cup was for guests to use. Wow, he did not expect a guest. Yes. Did the police already analyze this cup too? No, a choice of poison found that cup. So the killer was after Drew Misham alone. Oh, that's it. That's all the clues, I think. What about his Oops. little... Oh, what's that? No, oh, just the paintings again. Skip. Oh, oh my god, it's the Eiffel oh. Tower. That's it. But what is that thing pointing at? Does she have anything new to talk about now that we looked around? Oh, oh yeah, all of it. <laughs> so this, um, Drew Misham, what kind of artist was he? Apparently, he did a lot of illustrations for books I hear. Had a lot of female fans too, for what's worth. A female trans? Oh, well, I guess this stuff is pretty. Like that oil painting over there, for instance. Um, yeah. That wasn't one of his illustrations, actually. Huh, so it was a standalone painting or something? Is that what she meant? He was an odd bird, Misham. Hadn't shown his face to anyone until the end. 
What do you mean, to anyone? He was always locked up here in the studio, apparently. His only connection to the outside world was through letters he put in that letter box there. Letters? Do people still write letters? What do you mean, Apollo? I mean, it's 2024, get real, Trucy. Don't most people just use cell phone text messages these days? Shane, when's the last time you wrote a letter? Oh boy. Did you uh, ever write a letter and send it? Uh, to myself, and I never opened it. When you had to do that, like, second grade to sixth grade or whatever thing. Wow, you wrote a letter to yourself? Like a time and... capsule letter? Yeah. Do you still have it? No. Oh, damn. If you still had it, I'd have you read it. Oh, uh, I know my last letter. It was uh, a letter I wrote to Neng. Like, I don't know, four years ago, three years oh, ago. I, I remember. I still have that letter. Framed. Framed, that's right. <laughs> I can't believe it, Shane. You wrote a letter to yourself and you left yourself on red. Well, the, the handwriting was so bad. If you imagine how bad my handwriting is now, imagine little Shane. <laughs> he didn't even write anything, he just drew a bunch of scribbles and then put it in the envelope. I'm like, this little asshole sucks. <laughs> well, anyways, that Mr. Misham couldn't stand technology, it seems. He did everything by mail. Maybe he thought that was more artistic, you know? Hmm. Empty. In any case, the only person besides him allowed in here was his daughter, Farah. I thought that was his wife. Oh, you mean the killer? The suspect, please. We took the fingerprints, of course. The only ones found in the room were Mr. Michon's and Vera's, basically. Basically? Actually, last night, Mr. Michon gave an interview to a reporter for the first time. It happened during the interview, apparently. And you don't think the interviewer killed him? Could you tell us a bit more about what happened that night of that murder? Like, the, the interview? Oh, a lot of stuff. So, this woman, Verda, she's Mr. Misham's daughter, right? Yep, a real sickly girl ever since she was little. How did everyone outside? She did kind of give up a withdrawn sort of aura. She was homeschooled by her father, apparently. It was quite a scene when they took her to the detention center. She was screaming about how she'd die if they took her outside. That, uh, that did sound like a scene. In the end, she agreed to leave if she was allowed her good luck charm for company. Her good luck charm? Apparently, she has this charm that magically gives her the courage to go outside. Why can't I ever get a normal client? But why would a shut-in daughter kill her own dad? Don't look at me. So, about the poison, it was found to be in this coffee, right? No, not precisely. Not precisely? What does that mean? It means see for yourself, I think. Like I said, last night was the first time someone from the outside came into the studio. I guess mysterious painters who never go outside made for good articles. And it just so happens that he died the night of his first interview, huh? At around 9pm every night, Vera always makes him a cup of coffee. Last night he drank his usual coffee and suddenly became violently ill. And died? She poisoned him on the night of his interview. Wouldn't the reporter see that? He wasn't there, Mr. Michon, when she brought her father his coffee. He was checking out some equipment in the back of the room. So 
Supposedly, that's why she didn't notice who was there. It was the reporter who called the police, in fact. No, Wait. he died from a brain tumor. That's not his hair, that's just a giant tumor. <laughs> Wait, but then why is she the sus suspect? If anyone's suspicious, it's the reporter. Yet the reporter never got near Mr. Misham's coffee. Even Vera acknowledges that. Huh. Regardless, I want to know more about this reporter. Reporter. I bet Emma can help us out here, but she won't. Don't forget, Flattery will get you everywhere with her, Apollo. Everywhere? Huh? What are you two whispering about? He wants to get everywhere all over you. Well, I was thinking. I mean, what is it we always do when we run into you at a crime scene? What is it we always do? Scientifically. Ah, you know me too well. Uh, okay. Okay, meaning we can get some uh, scientific now and get all scientific and stuff. Oh, I suppose. Just this once. But it's my first time. Bring me anything you find suspicious and we'll check it out. First time today? Okay. What, do, what should we give her? The letter. The letter? Here's a letter. Here's his letter. Oh, that that. Hey, yes, that's a bright red, red red envelope. She sure is jumpy. Someone opened this, didn't they? My lips are sealed. You opened it, didn't you? Your your lips are sealed. That's a first. You mean you know what's inside the envelope? Sure, I read it after all. You were the one who ripped this open? Ha, huh, please, I would have steamed it open. But she did sneak a peek in it, apparently. Know that I have a powerful weapon on my side. A pistol? A weapon? Yeah, the use of tools. Highly specialized tools for information gathering. Tools I wouldn't mind getting my hands on. You should try flattering her, Apollo. They say a little praise can open her big let doors. Never heard that one, but it's good advice. Let's try talking to her some more. About that envelope we found. I was wondering if you could help us out with that tool you were mentioning. Pretty lady. Hey, <laughs> you want to know about my tool, don't you? It's called an X-ray analyzer. X-ray? Like the X-rays you get at the dentist? That's right. At least that's what I call it. Uh huh. It has a real name, but it's much more complicated. The X-ray spectralization. Something. How am I supposed to remember all that? So basically it lets you look inside things, like people? That's right, you're sharp, Trucy. But it's a bit more complicated than that in practice, of course. Actually, to tell the truth, I'm not really sure how it works scientifically. Can I try it out, Emma? Please? Oh, I suppose. Just go ahead and jump right in it. Of course, I've already checked out everything suspicious myself. Alright, let's give it a spin, Apollo. Let's see if we can look under someone's clothes. Ah, what are you doing? Oh, uh, just seeing if I can see through your clothes. But it looks like lead. Point that thing anymore, and it might fall out. Let's point it at your head instead. Then I wouldn't need an x-ray machine to see through it. Let's just get down to business then. Right, let's test that on a sample first. It just so happens that I have a lottery ticket here. Yep, 
you set the sample on the device like so. I don't see anything. Patience, there's no need to get all antsy. Look at the right side of the screen. That's the layer view of the envelope. Layer view? You've got it all set to display the outside the envelope now, see? Actually, it's quicker to just have you give it a try. Turn that dial over there with, uh, oh, left, down, right for me, would ya? I remember what you talking about. That's right. That's how you choose what depth you want to scan. Oh, I got something. See, that's how you can read the letters on the tick inside. Cool, huh? Except I can't read them. Just turn the dial a little more. What you have to understand is that a sheet of paper isn't really flat at all. When you zoom in that much, you see that the paper is like a bunch of hills and valleys. Wow, really? This x-ray device uses a beam with a wavelength of only 0 0.05 microns. It breaks cards down to thin layers, so it can only show what's written on that layer. Let's use it on the paintings. I'm not entirely following you, but what good is it if you can't read anything? That's why we're going to step two. Try rubbing the image a bit, if you would. Rubbing? Like going over it with the uh, west? While holding space? This world is wild. Whoa, Apollo, quit biting it! <laughs> there, that fixes the image on the screen. Now turn the dial again, just a little. Good, now you can rub this image to fix it too. Hey, I get it. We just keep doing this till we get the whole thing. Exactly, not bad. Neat, let's do more. Wrong way. Lottery numbers. You lose there. Oh wow, that got really clear suddenly. <laughs> like how it's a bunch of busy work until it's the actual thing. Okay, let's let this one out. Oh. Oh, I call us losers. I hate when paper calls me that. At least you know where you stand, eh? Anyways, now you see the true hidden power of my weapon. Neat, huh? Did Emma just spoil the case for you? <laughs> Maybe. Now let's try it on the real thing, shall we? All right, let's do this. Yeah, right there. No, 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 no. Eat it, Pac-Man. Eeper. I'm gonna kill myself with poison in seven years. No way is anyone making me do it. And then blame my daughter. Okay, let's print this one out. Mr. Drew Misham. I've deposited the $100,000 in the Disney account. Please send a receipt once you confirm the transfer. Someone gave him a bunch of money? His paintings must be really valuable. There's another page in there. Care to take a look? You bet! If you're going to read someone's mail, you might as well read it all. Okay, it goes with the second page then. 
This mini game's better than the shoe one. <laughs> What are you talking about, Shane? I was so good at the shoe one. Did you like how I fucked up the spell and <laughs> really bad? <Yeah. laughs> Quick name, what does it say? I don't know, Shane. You're gonna read out for us when it's done. It says, Shane, read this out loud if you dare. Okay, let's print this one out. It's a chain letter. Shane reads it. Oh, no. Find the papers and send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp within three days. I need not remind you to speak of this to no one. Hmm. So it was the letter about the payments for one of his paintings. Why all the secrecy, though? And and what? Why was this letter the only one in here? It's seven years old, right? Maybe it had some special significance to him. Well, Emma. Well, indeed. No, munch, munch. She knows something she's not telling us. Looks like she's keeping mum about it. Oh my god, I figured it out. The painting on the right seven years old, and he used that nail polish to remove it, and then it poisoned him. I got it all in my brain. Damn. Where is spoil this, Shane? Can you look at that other painting now and then use that thing? This one? Yeah, show, show that to her, or see so if you can use the thing. Look at this painting. Oh, that? Quite good, isn't it? Er, no, that's not what I want to ask you about. You want to examine it, is that it? I'd be happy to let you, if you had a good reason. But without that, sorry. Guess she wants us to do a little footwork on our own first. Fuck you, Emma. Okay. So oh, now what? Oh yeah, look at the back of the paintings. Does it have dates? Nothing on this one. Check the original. If that's the Whoa. original. Whoa. Ning, you didn't see it? Nope. Oh, it is a jellyfish. It is. You, you can see how they went over it. Maybe turn this one upside down and you'll see its secrets. No, you gotta look at it from an angle, a low angle. Oh, oh my god. Oh, it is Mickey Mouse. Oh no, it's a nutsack on the top. <laughs> okay, so we need to lead into examining the picture. Got anything? Any more talking topics? Nope, we have no more talking talks. He, he wants to see the show. <laughs> see a magic show? I was wondering if you could take a look at this ticket. Look, I'm a detective. A detective! You can't just ask me any old thing and expect an answer, okay? I think you need to be a little more focused in your inquiries. S scientific, even. Gumshoe would have talked about it. Gumshoe would have talked about it. Somehow I knew she'd get around to science. Gumshoe would have been like, hello, magic. Look at the, the, the paint on the, on the cup. Oops. Can you examine? Isn't it just a JPEG? I mean, the cup's right here. Oh. Can you examine that lip mark? Or pour the coffee out. Hey, look there! 
That stain doesn't look so healthy, Apollo. That must be the Blue Mountain stuff we've been hearing about. Something tells me that even Blue Mountain coffee isn't this blue. No, this thing is probably... Uh, better ask something about it. Alright, Emma, let's ask you about this coffee. Um, Emma, look at this mug. There's a pale blue uh, residue on the rim. Uh, uh, that, that, uh, yeah, well, it's just a rumor. But I've heard there's a kind of coffee called Blue Mountain. I'm pretty sure it isn't actually blue, Emma. Ah, right. Okay, you got me. That's left over from my testing spray. Forensic science! I knew your hobby was behind this somehow, Emma. It's not a hobby. So, what kind of scientific stuff are you up to? This spray, that's what. It turns blue when it touches poison. Any poison? So the poison that killed the victim was on this mug, huh? That's right. See? It wasn't in the coffee. The killer applied it to the rim of the mug itself. Wow, science is amazing. It certainly is helpful. Maybe Emma would be willing to help us out a bit more. You should try buttering her up, Apollo. They say flattery will get you everywhere. Sorry. I was looking at the baby monitor. It's certainly worth talking to her a bit more. I'm about poison analysis. I was afraid you were going to ask about that. Why? See, the poison solution... Scary. What'd you say, Shane? Poison scary. That's yeah. why I was afraid. <laughs> See, this solution is used to test for at atroquinine. Atroquinine. I'm not going to hit you with it because I don't know what it is either. Atro, huh? Atroquinine. The deadly poison found in the autopsy. Um, it's a jellyfish poison. <laughs> Uh-oh, I know that's sparkling her eyes. She's getting excited, but best tread lightly. It's one of the most vi virulent poisons, but it's it is absorbed into the body astonishingly slowly. It takes at least 15 minutes from the time of ingestion for adverse effects to show. That doesn't seem slow. Oh, and guess what? Recent research has shown that that's fine, really. We don't need to tell all about the core details. I think I get it. You spray this on something that you want to test, right? Precisely. You can find even the slightest trace of poison with this. Um, can I try, please? You don't have to ask twice. I already used it on everything suspicious, of course. Just spray it randomly around the room. Yay, give it a whirl, Apollo! Ah, wow, oh, you bitch! <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just seeing if it got a reaction off of you. Just see if your hair is poisonous. You know what, Trucy? If we ever find a gun, let me use it first. Let me test it to see if it works first, Trucy, alright? How's this for a reaction? If I ever get a gun, I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> that is. That's just toxic. How else are those hapless witnesses on the stand? I wish you had died. <laughs> Let's just get down and check for real poison, shall we? Alright, we Spray know what. Everything. We quickly. know what. What? Spray everything quickly. We know what we have to spray. What painting we have to go for. <laughs> of course. The jellyfish one. I knew it. I knew jellyfish were poisonous. Wow, I learned so much about nature. Actually, I'm surprised that there was no poison on that painting. Was it not on the... Go to the other areas, right on his desk. On the pointer. Maybe on the 
microscope. The oh. quill depends. Uh oh. We're not finding uh -oh. anything. I don't think there's any poison here, Emma. Well, she said she oh, already sprayed everything. Fart spray? Suspicious. What did you say, coming? Emma, is this just fart spray? <laughs> That's what my sister and nephew did to their whole floor in their apartment. What? They got the fart spray and sprayed everywhere and giggled like goblins. Uh Check the option. Maybe we're all colorblind in this instance. Okay. Maybe there's nothing. How can there be nothing? Can you zoom in on the desk? In this mode? No, you cannot. On the tiny picture frame. I know. Yeah, spray that. There's nothing. Nothing, see? Oh. Uh, what about the paint? I did spray the paint. That was like the first thing I went to. Oh, these paints. Uh, oh no, there's nothing. Can you... No, I guess you can't really look at your stuff. Maybe there is none. Hmm. They just wanted to show you this gimmick and to be used later. <laughs> Too bad. No reaction here. Why does it smell like vinegar? <laughs> I'm sure Emma checked out all the likely spots. Wait a second. What is it? Did you spray that little desk over there? I don't think so. This spray probably can't reach that far, you know? Let's check it out, just to be sure. Oh, wow. oh there you go. Tiny yeah. picture frame. Tiny picture frame. Don't click Tiny anything else. <gasps> oh, Poison! <gasps> <laughs> I knew it. When? Shane did know. Yeah, it, it was their it was their favorite poison. So <laughs> <they framed> it. <laughs> A reaction! A ball! Kill it! Ah! Where? Where? The inside of that cute little picture frame looked there's poison! Well, would you look at that? The nice gold, Trucy! I'm known to work magic. Never mind the owls the one found it. Bitch. Apollo, you have no personality. <laughs> Why would the inside of that frame have poison on it? It looks like we found the only other place that wasn't poison in any case. So I was wondering. Wasn't poisoned? <laughs> Everything else? <laughs> <laughs> this whole place is a death trap. <laughs> What's the story? <laughs> I, I, the... I gave you the no poison spray. <laughs> What's the story about the reporter that came here for a story the night of the crime? Ah, I'm afraid I can't tell you because he's going to be a witness tomorrow, I hear. Whoops. I hate that so. I'll never forget that face. But what was his name? Alright. Brusho. Brush -o. Does he like paintbrushes? He's after a scoop to sell to the papers. So a reporter comes for an interview with a painter. His first interview ever, and that night he's killed. Seems strange to you? Really strange. It does raise a few questions. I like to speak with with this reporter if I could. Well, I hear he's on the beat today, too. He said something about covering a magician. Magician? Well, clearly it's not true, see. Covering the magician in poison? <laughs> that leaves only one other person. It wasn't 
Valent Grammarly by any chance, was it? Yeah, something like that. I remember a weird fucking name like that. It's got some weird big show lined up right here. So he's out interviewing Valent Grammarly. Looks like I'll be heading out to that Coliseum again sooner than I thought. Here, I'll give you that reporter's card if you want. Woo! Also, I love that we're just breaking Phoenix's rules. Alright, thanks, Emma. So, buddy, you seen this guy? So, Joe's was here on a story? All eyes in the universe are upon my stage. How come you didn't know what question was coming up to you to ask? You're a fraud! I wasn't listening to your question, and I'm not answering it now. All pens seek to commit its mysteries to paper. This is just a rant I was already on. Um, his name is Brushel? Brushel. Brushel. Brushel! Brushel! I think he remembers him. Doesn't look too happy he doesn't about look it. too happy about it. You're right. I hate that brushel. That cloying smell of mint when he smiles. Yes. Um, could you tell us more about him? What did he want? A man by that name called on me just now. Just, just now? now? Yes. You don't need to repeat it. Valen's vision is always towards tomorrow. Valen's feet step always forward. That is all. That's all very confusing. I am to per perform a big magic show, yes? I wanted someone to cover it. Yet, he had ears only for that incident. The incident seven years ago. In any case, I requested that the rapacious reporter remove himself. So, a painter is dived. Who cares a shit? It is but a it is but a footnote in the footlights compared to the magic of Grammarly. Uncle Valen, do you know where the reporter went? Uh I don't know, some place for penalized perpetrators, probably the, def the detention center. A detention center? He was a rude individual. Might I see that card? Ah, uh, sure. Thanks. He would tear apart my respectability? Fuck him! Ooh, here it comes, Paolo. Big Uncle Valen's big magic trick. He just throws it in the trash. Is he gonna fix the car? Not sure that qualifies as big magic. No, you're gonna do, do a puzzle, put it back Here together. Here we go. He's doing it. He's gonna do it. Juicy, so excited to see him do it. Eats the card. What happened to the big magic? It is not even more. Is it not more miraculous for it to stay ripped? That's suspicious. <laughs> he must have really not liked this bad journalist. He was a bad man. Is there anything else we could show him? I don't think anything else is related. The paintings, none of this stuff. He doesn't care about any of this. Yeah, he doesn't care about anything. I think we're going to the detention center. Hey, we're back. We broke the rule, by the way. What do you mean? <laughs> Nothing. Bye. Shane. Oh, you're here to see Vera Machine. Yes, that's right. She's in the medical office at the moment. I'm glad you guys are finally medical talking to me office. after all these years. Is she okay? She's lying down. Said she didn't feel so good. 
I'm sorry, but I can't allow any meetings at the moment. Most annoying client ever. I guess we should come back. You guys can talk to me, you know. <laughs> I've been here for four games. Oh, did you hear something, Trucy? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, let's get out of here. Um, I don't know where to go next. We still need to spray this painting while I do this investigation. Why is there hidden painting here, Emma? Did you even know that? Emma, look at this painting that was hidden. Ah, uh, ah, uh, that one? I uh, wrote about it. What about it? It was hidden. Yeah, what about it, Apollo? Take a closer look at it, both of you idiots. Now, look at this one. I'm gonna do this like a children's book. I'm gonna flip, I'm gonna do it like Captain Underpants, okay? I'm gonna flip it back and forth. Tell me if you know something. Oh, I love do, those. Do you see that? You see it? I'm gonna do it back and do it again. This is the third painting he was working on. Yeah, they're the same. Uh, good, good. He's totally now, the forger, right? <laughs> maybe. I was hoping you wouldn't find that, damn it. You're right, though. Drew Michelle was copying this painting. Wow, it's pretty good. Copying a painting? What for? What for? Damn. Wait, does that mean we can do this now? Okay, Emma, we know he was copying the painting. Oh, that. It's quite good, isn't it? That's not what I wanted to ask you about. Come on. You want to examine it, huh? Yeah, we know it's fake. I mean, I let you. Yeah, good reason. Well, we know it's fake. Uh, gotta do some more work. Okay, what about this jellyfish painting? How about this painting? Quite good. Okay. Um, do some work. That red envelope, did we show that to Grammarie? Not that red envelope, the other one. That one. We haven't. That calling card? Yeah. Let's ask about this first. Yeah, that mask card, mask card. I might want to take a look at this poison painting. She's got nothing. Okay, let's go show him that. I thought we weren't supposed to, but I guess we could show him that. Hey, look at this. I'm always wondering if you could tell me about this thing. What is it? Oh, yes! <laughs> that appeared to bear the Grammarly seal! Huh. Uncle Valent, is something wrong? Juicy! Where, where did you get this? It's full of sweat serum! Um, uh, Daddy, he gave it to me. Your... Your dad? My partner, Zach? No, 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 my other daddy, Phoenix. My sugar daddy. Why now? Why would your lord daddy? Lord daddy, that's kind of... That's kind of a little weird. The signature upon the back. Do you recognize it? That belongs to none other than Zach. What? My daddy signed this? Might I be as so bold as to open it? Shut up! Let me open it! <laughs> I already I have it in my hands. Know. You know my answer already. You can read my mind. Uh... And he tore it up. fuck is in this thing? <clears throat> now, the time has come when I must return to my press and digitation preparations. 
By your leave, Miss Trucy. Thanks, Uncle Valent. See ya! Three days. Make ready for a miracle. That's way after this trial. That doesn't matter. What do you and think this that, game. What do you think Jonas was after? Why didn't Valent react like that to this envelope? I think it's time to go back to the detention center. Trucy. Why did never... she think that? Right. Because he's at the detention center. He told us that. Trucy, your uncle's going to kill you for this. Just so you know. Is he here? Boy, I hope that guard's not here. I didn't like him. Go ahead, Shane. I think I hear what you're saying. We're all doing it for the money. End quote. No, 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 not at all. It's like someone's already meeting here. Maybe that reporter. Is he trying to bribe that guard? <laughs> he said yes. <laughs> hey there. How are you doing? Who might you be? Ah, sorry. It's a good voice <laughs> for him, Shane. <laughs> I hope he's not a main character that you can't voice anymore later. <laughs> we didn't know someone's already here. Why are you twitching so much? I'm Apollo Justice, attorney at law. Talk about a nervous monkey. You, you're Justice? You? You know me? Do I know you? Of course I know you! There's now witnesses on stand till they spill beans. End quote. Th that's not true. What's he writing? <laughs> on yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. Writing down your quote. Are you a reporter by any chance? Whoa, you. You're Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you almost knew my name. What is this <laughs> hand gesture? What is he doing? <laughs> It says blood if you re look if you squint really close. <laughs> wow, you're flashing gang signs at us. <laughs> well, you almost knew my name. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Percy Wright hates carrying a bag. What Puts everything she owns in her panties. End quote. Oh, that's not true! It is! Just hold on to your britches there! I hate yellow journalism! I'll ramp up this interview in a jiffy! Interview? No, guard, I think I know what's going on here! Garden rooms is my life! What else could I possibly need? End quote! No. How many times do I have to tell you this? Look, I've got work to do. You deal with him. Um, did you come here just to interview the guard? Oh, wee! What a pickle! Because what do we talk? Oh, had to. <laughs> <laughs> Accused wouldn't talk. Had to interview someone for go plum crazy. End quote. <laughs> I should have guessed. Where's my manners? Over there? Named Brushel, Spark Brushel. I'm not picky. Journalist just cross-eyed, writes, end quote. <laughs> <laughs> What's that nauseating straw mint smell every time he grins? Until you've been interviewed by me, you don't know what thrilling is. Wild romp through crossroads of mayhem madness, end quote. I can see that. <laughs> He's writing something again. Well, Guys, this a... is my favorite looking character yet in this whole everything. <laughs> yeah, I think this is my favorite guy that's ever been in the series. 
Well, he's a reporter. Maybe he knows something. <laughs> Alright, buddy. <laughs> Tell me about yourself. <laughs> like his poses and the way he looks around like, uh, like, like he level. has he has no base model. It, <laughs> it's all <laughs> nothing. <laughs> so, Mr. Breschel, you're a journalist? Uh, me? Look. State one thing for the record here. Yes. I'm the interviewer. You understand, yeah? I'm the one asking the questions here, end quote. Okay. For instance, you think a movie director watches movies? Um, I think he probably does. Exactly! I know you'd understand. Huh? So, the night of the murder, you were at Drew's studio? No, oh, me? Look, let me state one thing for the record. Yes? I may look calm and collected, but I'm busy, real busy, always on the road. Journalist always buys one-way tickets, never looks back, end quote. I can understand that philosophy, but... You want to know the thing about one-way tickets? Once you use them, they're gone! All because you have to give them to the guy in the airport. True, I guess. But don't they give normal tickets away, too? Exactly! See? It's the same thing! What is? This is the worst interview I've ever seen or heard. So, you went to do a story on Drew Misham. Why is Truxy asking all the questions? And he never had a story done about him before, right? It's because Apollo's smart. He knows how. To, he knows to stay out of this conversation. That's right. Look. Let me say one thing for the record here. What? I fear you're gonna want to know about my source. What tipped me off to Drew? Why do the interview in the first place? Or the intro Drew? Well, yes. Look, it's like... Oh, got it. Hey, there's this burger joint with fabulous ketchup. You think the burger guy's gonna tell you where he got it? At the supermarket, maybe. Exactly, see? That's what I'm talking about. I think I may have actually understood that one. Well, there's this nothing I can talk about, really. Walls have ears, eyes, especially glass walls with speakers, end quote. Right. Guess we'll leave then. Ah, uh, but since you're here... Might as well tell me a tidbit of news I saw. I'll tell you a tidbit of news just for the heck of it. Sure, tell us! What is it? I remember it like it was yesterday. Was it yesterday during the interview when he murdered him? Yes. Wait, no. I've seen a movie on a trip and wandered into this burger place with amazing ketchup. When an article in the tabloid caught my eye. Famous oil painting stolen from art dealer's gallery. End quote. I believe it was. An oil what painting? Was that? It happens every day, right? <laughs> but I thought I've seen that painting somewhere before. A painting of a giant peach floating down a river. <laughs> Someone stole an oil painting of a giant peach. My physics makes no sense. 
Journalists can smell scoop better than burgers, end quote. Hmm. You mean like <laughs> this one? Oh, you brought it with you. Isn't that evident? All right. I'm going to go on the record here. Yes. I know what you're going to say. Professional, take this right brilliant column, end quote. I don't think so. Wow, Apollo. Look, buddy, Everyone write... knows what you're going to say today. <laughs> Look, buddy, I write brilliant columns about one thing. And that's food. You might understand. What could he possibly be writing? He didn't listen to a word I said. Alright. I guess nothing else is gonna matter. Maybe the other painting of the same book, Peach. The fake one? Yeah. Alright. Let me go into nope. record here. Skip. Knows nothing. But maybe we can use what this guy said as like testimony to test it with uh, this guy. Yep. Uh-oh. She's gone. She's not gone. Well, how'd it go? Find anything out? Actually, there was one thing I want to check with you. What? What's with that scary face you're making? And what's with the, I know something, but I'm not telling the face you got going, Emma. I know about that painting. This painting came from behind that dresser. Uh, yeah, so? It was stolen, no? I was hoping you would figure that out. Do you think you could tell us a bit about this? I suppose. It's what you think. Drew Misham was a forger. A uh, forger? Like the coffee folgers? So, what exactly is a folger? Well, basically, it's someone who makes forgeries. Fakes, in other words. Why is it called forgeries if the word is folger? Fakes? Copies of an original. Exact copies, so precise you couldn't tell them apart. Well, why not just photocopy them? The big problem with forgeries is that people try to sell them as the real article. It's a crime, of course. So, Drew was... A criminal? I'm afraid so. He received money to create elaborate frat forgeries. To supplement his work in illustration, I guess. I see. Actually, that's why I brought this here in the first place. She knew before she even came here. What do you mean? When you're trying to determine if a painting's a forgery, the rough sketch underneath can be a valuable clue. So the rough sketch is like practice for the real thing. Like doing a magic trick in front of a mirror before you go on stage. But not in the case of a forgery. Not necessarily, anyways. You know what the finished product's gonna look like, after all. Uh, yeah, I guess you would. That's why I brought this. I'm gonna use it to see what's under the paint of the finished pieces. Again, now. Not that I really need to go to such lengths. Seeing as how one of the paintings was only half finished anyways. Still, it'd be neat to see Mr. Misham's rough sketches. Kind of like what he was drawing when he thought no one was looking. Let's go through his Google search history. True, that could be interesting and may be valuable for our case. You should try buttering her up, Apollo. Get her nice and wet. You know... I'll take it if that means you deal with the interviewer. Hmm, maybe I should ask Emma to help us out. Alright, Emma, help us. Um, I kinda wanna see the rough sketch under this painting. 
And I was wondering if your tool there might do the trick. Oh, fine, fine. Just this time, though. Let's check it out. I'm gonna go piss quick. Alright. Ooh. Shall we do... Let's do this one first. It's a lot of stuff. I just started at the weird squiggly line. It looks like... Oh! Oh my god, it's a person. Oh my god, it's a crime scene of... Wait, the poker game? What the? What the? Okay, let's print this one out. I'm back, did I miss anything cool? We're doing uh, the first photo and this is what it is. It's Phoenix? Uh, no, not quite, because the hands are different. But Are you sure it's not Phoenix with like a hat on? I mean, it could be Phoenix, but I'm, I'm assuming it's not because the hands are different. Like it's A234 and that wasn't in the game. I don't think it's just a different hand, like a different knight. Well, I mean, it could be. What? Yeah, what, what the, the heck? That? That's behind this one. Oh, uh, maybe she, maybe it was named Flawless Remover. Shane was right. Wow, he really blows. The finished painting isn't anything like the rough. Devices like mine didn't exist until recently. He probably thought he could draw any sort of thing he wanted to for the rough. <laughs> what? what do you mean? You really think he drew all that? Well, in the past, you could only analyze the composition of a rough sketch. Composition? In other words, the traces of charcoal between paint and canvas. So you could tell if there had been a rough sketch. But not what it looked like. Ah, I think I follow you. So in essence, it wouldn't matter what was underneath the finished painting. Some pearls were actually paint over a rough sketch entirely. Then do a completely new painting on top of that. So, Mr. Misham was drawing whatever he felt like before painting on him. Possibly. Is there a problem with that? Not particularly, but something about that sketch itself is kind of weird. You're awfully silent all of a sudden, Apollo. You think we could check out one of the other paintings? Well, sure. You like this det detection stuff, don't you? Alright, so that was the first one. Let's see what's behind the jellyfish photo. Behind the jellyfish is a puffer fish. No way, it's a puffer fish. Alright, let's play uh -huh. a mini game. That's pretty play puffer game. fishy. Let's play a mini game. Let's see if we can figure out what it is first before the others. Anybody got a guess yet? To finally get one guess. It's a race. First one to get it right wins. Dude, what if it's I get a it wrong? Skate. It's a house. Oh, it's a, wait, that's a crying face on the right. Oh, bugs fighting? What? Is it, bugs it's, fighting? It's, oh. I, my it's guess the, was house. Is it's the this all the game. other? It's yes. Aldoon. It's Aldoon. I guess the first. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's print this one out. Hmm. What the fuck? What? Someone has precognition. Damn, precognition, that's what it was. <laughs> oh, it's got the logo and everything. So is the this... last one going to be a burning guitar? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> this one, too. What the fuck is going on? Apollo, is this... Is this a magic trick? Um... You think I could just look at the last one? Find my meat. Knock yourself out, I guess. You guys are looking freakier by the second. Alright. We're getting mind freaked. New minigame. Alright, minigame. Who's new minigame? We 
guess what's gonna be this one? Closest oh, one wins. Burning stage. Burning stage. Karen. I'll wait till I actually see the picture if I'm only gonna get one guess. Yeah, I guess now. My guess is it's Lammy. Flying Lammy. You guys both guess. I could just wait till the very end when it's complete now and then I can just say it. Yeah, but then you know you just stole the it's answer. It's the rising stage. Who guessed it? It's the stage. Uh, I said burning. Oh, look at it. And it's him on, up on playing on up on top of it. On fire. Huh. I said that yeah. in the last painting. <laughs> 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 All right, let's put this one out. Wow. Damn, Gavin, you really rocked Shane, that stage. Do you have precognition? <laughs> A bit. Shane, how did you know? What? What the heck is all this? I... You guys are scaring me. You sure your device isn't leaking like some kind of weird, strange memory radiation? Articles from is the past. Is this how Lemmy lost her memories? Trucy, look at these sketches! Do you notice anything? Come on, use your brain. What's this one, Trucy? What's this one, Trucy? Come on. What's this one, Trucy? Come on. Ah! They're all jellyfish! <laughs> now you both watch your sheets. What's going on? These sketches are of the three cases I worked on. What? A murder in the poker room at the Borscht Boat Club? The dead man pulling the noodle stand? And then... Gavin looking hot on stage? What? What can I mean? How could he have drawn those, those things? And why? That's what I want to know! Wait, is Drew Misham... Your father? Give me a break! What? No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Why did she even say that? <laughs> no, Emma, are you, Emma, are you retarded? <laughs> I've never even heard of any Drew Misham before. Hey, you can't say that nowadays. It's autism. <laughs> I hadn't even seen a picture of him. But those were my cases drawn on his canvas. Every single one of them. It couldn't have been a coincidence. Just who was this Drew Misham? And what did he have to do with me? To be continued. Good, good time. Damn. Well, Shane, thank you for being here today. Yahoo! And everyone, goodbye for now. <laughs>